Hello. Uh, my name is Mark Johnson. I work at um, Bing now through PowerSet. So Nietzsche famously declared that God is dead, and I am today going to declare that search startups are dead, those that compete with things like Bing and Google. And entrepreneurs, we're sort of a feisty crowd, and we always think we can innovate, innovate our way out of things. But I'm sort of a, a, a search engine startup addict. I've been at three of them so far. And out of those three, I still can't buy a Gulfstream. So I'm pretty much a failure, right? <laughs> Um, and I'm going to argue that this is sort of an exer exercise in apologetics. It's not my fault. It's really systematic that a search engine can't exist. And the problem is the greenback, the dollar. It's just really, really expensive to build a search engine. So I'm not going to talk about marketing or switching costs or anything like that. I'm just going to talk about the sheer cost of building a search engine. Now, I do have a disclaimer. I sort of made up these numbers a little bit. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I took Excel and I ran these numbers, but they are based on some amount of experience. I've been through three search startups, so I've seen all this stuff and server costs. So I created a little equation. And the equation basically has people costs, because you need a lot of people to build a search engine. It has hardware costs, and the hardware includes storage and crawling, relevance, and runtime. And of course, the Johnson coefficient, because any equation must have your name in it somewhere. So I'm going to explain all of these things um, and show you why there can never be another search engine, and show you what this huge number is. So the web is big over a trillion documents. So think about that. Storing all those documents, storing them redundantly, is really, really expensive. You just need a ton of servers for this. Um, and I think that's something that you just cannot ignore. Is there's just no copy of the web anywhere that you could just go fetch somewhere. It's even bigger than you think. You're not just storing the web page. You're storing text. You're storing uh, links. You're storing anchor text. Plus, you're a smart uh, search startup, so you're storing extra things that you process on the page. There's a lot of stuff you're storing. And keep in mind that the web is constantly changing. So you can't just crawl the page today. You have to look at it tomorrow, and the next day, and the next month. So aside from crawling and storing things, now you have to worry about relevance. So Bing and Google are sort of the standard. <laughs> and so you need to at least equal them, and that's very costly. Sorting out spam is a real problem also. So there's a trillion documents. A lot of those are bad. So figure out what the bad ones are. Am I in 15 seconds now? Oh, perfect. And there's a lot of ancillary things, too. So images, maps. There's all sorts of other things that, um, that need to be added to your search engine. And licensing this content and displaying this content is really, really expensive, because that's part of the whole search experience. So now think about when you do a search. You get results back in a split second. How is that possible? What happens is, when you issue a search to a search engine, it goes to hundreds, maybe thousands of servers. So it gets federated all over the place. So I think one thing that people don't understand about search is it's not just processing all those documents. It's going to divide and conquer whenever a, a search um, comes in. So that's a really expensive thing to do when you have millions of people running dozens of searches a day. That's really, really expensive. So the other important thing is the Johnson coefficient. So, at PowerSet, our index was 10 to 20 times bigger than a typical keyword search index. So this is basically the coefficient that says, wow, you're a search startup, you're innovating, so you need a lot more storage. So that's just a tax you get. People are really expensive. PhDs, engineers, you know, these people want a lot of money. So my estimate is that you need at least 250 people, probably for two years, and that's probably a low estimate, to build a search engine. And that's really, really, really expensive. So what does this all add up to? I think it's about $100 million on the lower end, just for people and hardware, and $300 million on the high end. That's a lot of money. Do you think you're going to go to a, a VC and say, oh, yeah, give me $300 million? They're not going to say yes. Um, I've got a few case examples, or case studies. Um, search me. I mean, look what happened to them. So they're serving images of pages. They're storing images of pages. That's really expensive. You know, I don't know what they were thinking, but you know, $30 million is not going to get you that. PowerSet's another great example. We've got great engineers. We licensed amazing technology from Xerox PARC. We had this great vision. And all we really could do was index Wikipedia. And granted, we sold ourselves to Bing, so it's not a total failure. But we never, we never capitalized on our vision to actually index the entire web. But keep hope alive. There's lots of other searches out there. There's Twitter search. There's, there's travel search. There's news search. There's all sorts of searches you could do, but they're all niche searches. They're not replacements for Google and Bing. So the next time some guy comes to you and says, oh, you know what? Me and five engineers in my garage are going to build a search engine. Don't give them any money, because they're not going to be able to do it. So um, that's my story. Yeah. <laughs>